now please ask uh, uh, Mr Egon Lee to, to speak to us. Uh, Egon's a very active member of the Australian Business in Europe uh, uh, Committee and uh, has had long experience in, in relations, economic relationships in particular between uh, Australia and Germany, but also education as well. So, welcome. <coughs> Business relations with Europe and in particular with Germany rarely make it into the media. Very few people actually know that the European Union has a larger population than the USA and Germany is Australia's largest trading partner in Europe. The European Union as a total has close links with Australia, but the media can't get their head around it. The most amusing issue for me is when they talk about UK and Europe. I have high regards for the Australian education system, but teaching geography is obviously not its strength. Back to the task on hand, the European Union and its members have a lot to offer. The crisis in recent times made people wondering what happens over there, does it survive, and can it fix all the problems? I'm absolutely sure they will fix it and move forward. During the creation of the European Union, we always had crisis. But mainly from inside, once it was France and later UK, and just today I read UK is again thinking about uh, membership in the European. Today we see also a price which was created from outside by our friends in the financial industry, playing in the casino and taking in on the on club net, rather than looking closer to UK or the US state of the debt level. <coughs> I don't think Greece will bring down the world. Yes, Germany takes a lead in the European Union because it is a power plant. However, it also got into the fire line and ended up as a black sheep. That comes with the territory from my point of view, and sooner than later, we will see the European Union will become a transfer union, like the Federal Republic of Germany itself. Having said this, which certainly is sometimes controversial, Let's explore, explore what we can learn from Germany. I will talk about the topics on the slide behind me. <coughs> I will start with the most unloved subject in Australia, manufacturing. <laughs> Germany has a very strong manufacturing industry which is recognized as a backbone and stabilizer of the economy. The manufacturing industry contributes 22.6% to GDP. In comparison, in Australia it is 9%, UK 11, USA 13, and Greece 10. Even the European Commission has acknowledged that there is a need to revitalize the manufacturing industry to an European Union average of 20% by 2020. You will ask why. It is so easy to shuffle paper and gambling on the stock market, creating artificial cash flow, and now and then a global financial crisis. No risk, because the taxpayer will pick up the losses. Manufacturing creates more jobs and real value in the form of IP 
the than tourism or service industries. If you lose the manufacturing industry, you lose the skills which you can't bring back. Once Barack Obama asked Steve Jobs of Apple what the US government could do that Apple would manufacture the iPod, iPhone, I and uh, iPad in the US rather than in China. And Steve's answer was, the US industry doesn't have the skills anymore. This little anecdote gives you the complete picture. You lose the manufacturing industry, and you start importing all the merchandise for your daily life. If you don't have anything to export, your trade balance goes south. The German manufacturing industry is an important pillar of the economy, export, and a positive trade balance. It invests in plant and equipment, and even more important, in R&D. The companies develop their own IP and high value added products, not investing into Me Too products. Germany spends 2.84% of GDP for R&D, and the majority is done by the car manufacturers and the automotive supply industry. In comparison, Australia spends less than 2%. After the GFC, the German government cut all accounts apart from the research budget. The federal budget for education research in 2013 increased to 13.7 billion euros, despite the consolidation of the overall budget. The German manufacturing sector has a strong core of SMEs, small, medium-sized enterprises, makes 16.3% of the industry. These companies employ 43% of the employees, cover 39% of value added, and 80% are high-tech or medium to high-tech companies, and most are family businesses. There is an international study which shows that most family businesses are doing better than the rest. They have a long-term view and are prepared to forego dividends in favor of capital investment. R&D, equipment, and processes. <coughs> Famous examples are Volkswagen and BMW. SMEs in Germany have created more than one million new jobs between 2005 and 2011. The relationship between the financial and the industrial sector is much closer in Germany than here in Australia. German SMEs have no problems to get bank loans to fund new technologies or expansions of their business. In contrast, Australian banks have almost a blank ban on manufacturing, and in particular on automotive. Today, I am still puzzled when I hear that Fusil, once the biggest manufacturer of solar cells based on Australian IP, would not get the funding for the factory here in Australia. They built three factories in Germany and employed 3,000 people. A second solar cell technology ended up in Chinese factories. Another example is Ceramic Fuel Cell Limited, a spin off of CSRO. With its research center still in Melbourne, factories in Germany and UK. Linus, an Australian rare earth mining company, couldn't get the permits for a processing plant and created the jobs in Malaysia. The question is, why can't we add value to Australian minerals and IP in Australia? The media have created the impression or better to say, the myth about the employment in the mining industry. 
The current so-called mining boom is a construction of civil work to build or expand the mines. The number of people required to operate the mine will be smaller, and by the way, it will further decrease. Rio Tinto has just started to introduce driverless dump trucks, and I'm sure the others will follow suit. Currently, the mining export keeps the trade balance in the black. Without it, in about 40 years, Australia relies on tourism for paying for the lifestyle. I think it will hardly work, considering Greece already tried it. Having worked in both countries, I can say Australia is a suitable place for manufacturing of high-tech and high-value-added products, as long as the business has a vision, long-term thinking, and leadership. Now, one ingredients for manufacturing high-tech or advanced technology is education. The most significant difference in regards of education between Australia and Germany is any idea? In Germany, education is a taxpayer investment in the future and not an expense of today as in Australia. We have a different view about it. Education in Germany at schools and universities is free of charge for Australian students as well when they go to Germany. The focus is different regarding languages. Students start learning a second language in primary school. to learn English. In secondary schools, they learn two languages which are compulsory and even more volunt and even more languages if they want to. Every student speaks at least three languages after finishing secondary school. Some universities offer so-called European degrees, which is a parallel degree or dual degree at a German university and a university in another European country. And the coursework is in that low language. The coursework also includes a three or six months internship or proceeds Considering the world is a marketplace for employment, they will have the edge. Therefore, it is totally out of place to set a scene like European languages where yesterday, today we learn Asian languages in Australia. The correct answer is really both. Interestingly, Asian languages are not so widespread in Germany but I met young Chinese people recently in China who spoke very well English and they have started to learn German because they want to work for a German company in China. Through the SAXA exchange program, we have more and more young Australians who confidently use their German skills after the exchange to study and work in Germany or are keen to get a job with a German company. And most of them are quite successful with this job. Another curious example, I speak five languages. One of them is only used as a Vatican. But when I go to Asian countries, locals quite often talk to me in German. To be a country like Germany on the front foot of innovation and research, the availability of engineers and scientists is paramount for German businesses. And therefore, the promotion of so-called mint decrees, nothing for half the mint, it's more or less the abbreviation for math, informa informatics, science, and technology, is high on the German agenda in particular trying to attract the birds. In contrast, Australia scratched the subsidy for math and science degrees this year, despite of a significant shortage of engineers.
centri I call it the German version of vocational education and training. This is a strong feature in the German education system. This is dual uh, training. It provides an alternative to university for school leavers with it about 400 certified courses in professions. It's a combination of school and apprenticeship in a business for at least three to three and a half years. OECD is complaining about the share of university students of the age group in Germany, which is lower than in other countries, which do not have this type of event options. However, they disregard the benefit of this feature of the German system. Its benefit actually reflects in the use unemployment data in the age group of 19 to 40 years old. Germany has 8.1% unemployment in this group, UK 20.2, European Union 23.4, and Australia 17. In Europe, other countries with high level of youth unemployment, such as Spain, have expressed their interest in this type of training and asked Germany to assist with implementation. There are other countries, including China, around the world, actually said that they have started to implement this type of educational training. In contrast, Victoria has just cut the funding for TAFE. TAFE certificates in some fields would be the closest training option by comparison. Australia is not only facing a shortage of engineers, but also of tradespeople. The manufacturing industry is already losing out on skills such as tool making. Most of the current tool makers are migrants from European countries and they are reaching retirement age. The parents in Germany, that's a subject related to our schools here, the parents in Germany don't have any say in the coursework schools. After so many years in Australia, I still, it still puzzles me and it's intriguing that Australian schools change happily the offered subjects in order to please parents, particularly when we talk about languages. With all respect, my view is that the Australian education system at all levels is driven by money only and lost sight of its customers. So it's In all organizations I have been managing in Australia, we had to introduce classes for English, writing, reading, and basic math for software operators in order to run a modern manufacturing environment. Another area, Australia maybe have, has a look something from Australia is the recycling industry. The recycling industry is not very much developed in Australia. The discussion reminds me of the discussion we had in Germany way back in the 60s and 70s of last century. The industry was screaming and telling us we will lose all the jobs. <coughs> Certainly the end of the world was predicted long before the end of the nine famine. So what happened? Germany created a recycling industry which actually employs more people than the industry which makes the parts. Germany doesn't have any landfill sites anymore. It wouldn't have the space anyway. The incinerator plants are struggling because they don't get enough residual garbage to keep the process running. Today, the car industry has to design and build cars which are easily to dismantle and to recycle. It means the supplier have to do the same with their components. That's legislated in the European Union. Since Germany is short of own resources for the high-tech industry, the electronic waste is in the fire line. The, to the topic rare, rare earth shortage because of Chinese politics puts a focus on this type of 
request on your old mobile computer and so forth. However, the whole recycling subject was also driven by environmental issues as such as contamination. What I see, Australia is very weak in this. To be fair, the overall situation has improved in Australia. I know some companies which have started to move into this uh, industry sector. For example, collecting catalytic converters from cars and processing recycling the precious metal coating. I think I don't have to tell you it's a subsidiary of a German company. Finally, Australia even has recently got a recycling scheme for old batteries, which was installed by Aldi. I can tell you the story about this when I came here 23 years ago. I was used to take the old batteries to the office because we had a box to collect them. So one day I took them mine back to the office and asked my PA, where is your box with the old batteries? She looked at me like, I have to add some come from another planet. <laughs> so I take the round pin, throw it out. Learning exercise for me. <clears throat> Renewal energy. There is no doubt that Germany is a front runner in renewable energy, and that's a field where Australia has close ties and places with, with Germany, sorry. Uh, virtual programs, joint programs in this field. I think there is no question that solar power would work in Australia as good as in sunny Germany, or wind farms as well. However, the uniform political framework is missing. And as a result, Australia missed out on establishing an advanced manufacturing industry for the future. Just remember the story about Fusel and CFCL. Now, there is a lot of talk in Australia about industrial relations, how good or bad. Germany has probably a smoother record in industrial relations, however, it's not just a cultural issue. Having been in charge of factories in Germany and here in Australia, I think I can put it down to three issues. First and most important, shop stewards and union reps in Germany are better educated. Put it blunt, they can read a balance sheet. Second and equally important, German companies value the employees more often than in Australia as an important asset. Don't get me wrong, you have salt ones in Germany as well. Certainly you have salt ones as well, but I think the ratio between good and bad is the other way around. Third, during the slowdown of the market, German companies work short hours long before they retrench people. That was, <clears throat> you don't want to lose your good people. That was the reason why the German economy had the jump start of the GFC. Just an anecdote, I did it here during the recession which we had to have in the early 90s. The union rep looked at me like an exotic creature from an outer space planet. After a week or so, he finally got his head around the proposal and we Implement, uh, implement it. Thinking is very simple. If you retrench people, they get a pocket of money, which is gone in four weeks, and the recession went almost two years. If they get less money, as usual, and constantly, it's a much better solution. And the factory doesn't use the skills. My last topic is a bit tricky one. Normally I don't it's called the political framework. Germany has a more, from my point of view, has a more continuous and predictable policy environment. When a policy passed the parliament after all, the political wrestling, the opposition doesn't, opposition doesn't come up the next day and promise to, uh, to remove it completely after the next election. Another advantage for sure is a four-year fixed term of the parliament. In 
last but not least, is the most important point, however, is federal and state governments are completely supporting education, research, innovation, and manufacturing, and in particular SMEs, not just lip services. In conclusion, we can say there are the three major issues where Australia made and learned from Germany manufacturing research 